do it this morning, God, that things are going to turn around today, God. Thank you for allowing us to stand before you, God, each and every day in your presence, Lord Jesus. You are a miracle-working God, still in the miracle-working business, Lord. We thank you for what we are able to do. We thank you for where we are able to go, for providing, for you are the provider, for you are Jehovah Jireh, you are Jehovah Nisi, you are the Alpha and the Omega, God. You are the beginning and the end, the creator of heaven and of earth, God, and we acknowledge you this morning, Lord Jesus. Take your rightful place this morning, Holy Spirit, and rest upon your people. Oh, we need you, Jesus. Oh, we need you. Just tell them that you need them. Oh, we need you this morning, Heavenly Father. We can't do it without you, God. We can't do it without you, Lord Jesus. We need you. We need you, Heavenly Father. We need you to fill us up this morning. We need to be replenished. We need to be refined this morning, God. We need that touch from heaven, Lord Jesus, so that we may boldly speak, God, that we may boldly walk, that we may boldly behave as you have called us to do, Lord Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace and your mercy, Lord, for your mercies are brand new each and every day, God. When you allow us to go to and from our destination, we thank you, Lord. For when you allow us to go home at night and sleep in our beds, we thank you, Lord. And here today, God, we've come to honor you for all that you've done in our lives. For the whole week, Lord Jesus, you have brought us to this day. And th today is the day that we will give you praise. Today is the day that we will love you a little bit more. Today is the day that we will give you a little bit more. In the name of Jesus. Why don't we all go ahead and stand here this morning, church? Let's stand here today in the presence of God in preparation for today's service. The Holy Spirit is moving. The Holy Spirit is searching. The Lord is looking for someone whom he can pour his anointing out to. Will you say yes this morning, church? Will you receive the Lord? Because he loves you. The Lord loves you. He's here for you. The Lord is with us. We still have a few more moments in prayer this morning. Don't miss your opportunity to get closer to Jesus. Don't miss your opportunity to draw closer to God. But take advantage of what the Lord has given us. Oh, as we honor you, we glorify you all over this place. Let's continue to pray in the name of Jesus.
excited to be here this morning and to greet every single one of you guys for coming out and being here this morning in the presence of God Almighty. And guess what? You get to be a part of that and you get to bring in and help us bring in the presence of the Lord God Almighty. What a beautiful and awesome time we're going to have. I pray that you will prepare your hearts this morning because God is going to move. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And amen. Well, praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord another good hand of praise here yeah. this morning. Amen. Well, my name is uh, Pastor Ray. This is my wife, Sister Bree. We're part of the team here that God is doing. Amen. How many know God is doing something amazing here in VOLV? Yeah. And, but this morning, we just want to welcome everybody once again, even those that are tuning online. Amen. Today, how I many know it's going to be a special, special Sunday? Amen. But let's open up in a word of prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we just come before you once again, Lord. We just want to thank you for giving us this opportunity, God, of being able to be inside your house. We just ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit, your anointing, my God, will have full, li full liberty, my God, of this whole service, my God. I ask, my God, that you will move like never before, my God. Use your son in a special way as he comes to minister your word. We ask, my God, for safe traveling mercies for, for those that are still making the way. We dedicate this service unto you in Jesus' name. And everybody says amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord another good hand of praise here this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise the Lord here today. How many know that there's freedom where the Spirit of the Lord is? Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Hey. Clap your hands, hey! Shout! 
praise the Lord. Come on, praise Him. Oh, come on, bless His name. Bless His name. We have a reason to praise. We have a reason to worship. Oh, come on, all over this room, just lift up your voice. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Oh, we magnify your name. Oh, we bless you here today, Jesus. You're worthy of our praise, Jesus. Lord, we're so grateful for your grace, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Come on, just worship him here today. to give you glory. We come to bring worship unto you, Jesus. That no matter what we face, no matter what we go through, you're so worthy through it all. You're so worthy through it all. No matter what happens, no matter what comes our way, you're so worthy of our praise. You're so worthy of our worship.
we'll sing it out, church. Sing mighty word, mighty Just 
Father, we need you in this place, Lord. You are worthy of our worship. If he is worthy of your worship, begin to sing King of Glory. Surrender your life to God by lifting up your hands and saying, God, I worship you. every hand lifted in this place there's a beautiful presence in the atmosphere and here this morning we celebrate Palm Sunday and this is a reminder of Jesus's faithfulness this is a day where prophecy was fulfilled this is a day we're reminded of Jesus and his kingship and his sovereignty and this is a holy moment He's a king and he's been faithful and he's going to continue to be faithful in our lives. We're just going to take a moment just to bask in the presence of God. But I want you just to express your, your gratitude and your thankfulness of his sovereignty, of his mercy and his grace and the, the fulfillment of his prophecy and, and the sacrificial love that he expressed. Thank you, Lord. Our hearts are overwhelmed with gratitude this morning, Lord. We're grateful, Lord, that you came down to this earth, God, and you lived a humble life, a sacrificial life, a sinless life, Lord. Oh, you're sovereign, God. We know that you're in this house. 
and we celebrate you and we worship you as the king that you are oh you're a king and you're worthy to be praised lord you reign on the throne of our hearts you reign god as king in our lives as lord of our lives we surrender to you and we give you our worship we give you our adoration we give you lord the glory as the glorious king as the glorious master as the divine physician as the divine provider oh you're worthy lord oh yeah we love you jesus we love you we love you that's it pour your love out on the lord pour your love out on the lord this morning hallelujah lord oh we love you jesus we love you jesus you're the king of glory you're jehovah jireh Oh, yada get it. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. King of this place. Just want to be with you. Oh, we want to be with you. is why we come here to the house of God is to be with Jesus we come to bask in his presence and this isn't something that's mechanically created but this comes from the desires of our heart and we celebrate this morning God's faithfulness and his sovereignty he's been faithful to fulfill his prophecy over thousands of years and he's faithful to do it again. How many of know how many of us know that he's faithful to do it again, to do it again? And so you may have a need here this morning. There may be somebody that may be paralyzed, or you may be blind, or you may be deaf, or you may have a broken heart, or you may be addicted to drugs, or you may know somebody that may be on the verge of committing suicide. How many of us know if God was faithful then, he can do it again? And he is in the house. I said, Jesus is in the house. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so right now, we're going to pray for those needs. Do you have a need here this morning? Can we pray for those needs? Come on, let's lift it up to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Your presence is so strong. And we know, God, that God, just by you being here right now, God, chains and shackles are broken. Lives are restored and burdens are lifted. Lord, you make a way in the wilderness, God. Lord, you cause the blind to see. You cause the dead to rise. God, you split the seas, God. You're sovereign. You're majestic. You're all-powerful. And so right now, we command depression to be broken. We command suicide to be broken. We command addictions to be broken. In the name of Jesus, anxiety shall flee. Depression shall flee. Broken hearts shall be mended. Lord why because you've been faithful Lord we know that you did it in the past God we know that you can do it again and we know that you're coming back for your bride we know that you're coming soon Lord also oh, Lord this morning God we just celebrate your faithfulness Lord we celebrate your sovereignty we celebrate your mercy and your grace God oh you're so wonderful to us you're so wonderful to us we glorify you we glorify you can you lift up your voice for just 30 seconds and begin to thank him that he's been a healer in your life can you thank him that he's been a provider in your life can you thank him that he's been faithful in your life come on lift up your voices 30 more seconds give the lord a good praise give him a good shout hallelujah lord we give you glory god we give
give you praise, Master. You're sovereign. Oh, you're majestic. You're all powerful. You did it, God. You defeated the grave. You defeated sin. You defeated any stronghold, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hey, shout with victory. Shout with the voice of triumph. Listen, we came here this morning to celebrate the Lord. Can we put our hands together? The best that we can do. The best, the best, the best. I want you to clap until your hands are red, till your hands are hurting. I want you to shout till you lose your voice. Why? Because Jesus is in the house and he did what nobody else can do. Somebody shout. Don't stop, don't stop. Shout for the Lord. Hey, you're worthy. You're glorious. Hey. You know, we didn't we didn't come here, we didn't get here just to just to have a routine service or a routine time. But today is special. Look to your neighbor and tell them today's so special. You know, there's so many great things that we can celebrate today. And number one is God's faithfulness. You know, as we celebrate our Palm Sunday, this is a a reminder of God's faithfulness to what he said in scripture. Over over thousands of years ago, God promised us that he was going to come back and he was going to come for our sins and for our forgiveness and we are excited to have you here in the house of God today why don't you get out of your seats and greet somebody tell them they are looking good welcome them this morning How many of us are excited to be in the house of God? Isn't it beautiful that we get to come together and worship our Savior? Amen. Go ahead and make your way back to your seats and you can go ahead and have a seat and greet your neighbor once again. Tell him you're looking good this morning. Welcome. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, it's a beautiful, beautiful Palm Sunday that we get to celebrate. And we want to welcome everybody. And I see some first-time guests here this morning. And we have something special for you. You can see Sister Dalma. We have a, a present there in the back. And we want to make sure that you're connected with our church. On behalf of our pastors, Pastor Benny and Sister Evelyn, we like to thank you and those that are joining us online. And we are excited this morning. We have a power-packed service in store for each and every one of you guys amen and right now what we're going to do is the women of God are the women of God in the house come on where are the women of God at amen all the women of God and the gang girls they were able to go to Guadalajara Mexico for the women's convention amen and it was a powerful time. I was able to hear some testimony. I heard my wife's testimony, amen. And right now, what we want to do is we have a few uh, testimonies that we want to hear. How many of us want to hear what took place over there in Guadalajara, Mexico, amen? So right now, we have a very special video presentation pre prepared for you guys. So go ahead and direct your attention to the screen. We are back from Guadalajara, Mexico, Women's Convention 2024, and we have heard from God. It was a special time. We have a few testimonies, and enjoy. Hi, my name is Adelina, and I just want to thank God for my salvation, for our pastors and leaders who push us and encourage us and challenge us to step out by faith and attend these conferences. And this year, as you know, it was in Mexico, in Guadalajara, and um, it was just such a phenomenal experience from the from the time we got there to the time we left it was an experience and we have so many stories to share but one message that really spoke out to me was Zanel um, and she talked about um, being in formation and I know that many times we can be gripped by fear and many other things but it's so important that we stay in formation with the call of God and that we don't allow anything to get us or hinder us from fulfilling the call and that was just a word that really stood out to me and I'm just so excited to be home now and to be in formation and to align myself with the call and the greater things that are ahead this year. God bless you. Hi, my name is Felina. I just wanted to thank God for my salvation. I wanted to thank my pastors and my leaders and everybody in the church that has lifted me up. Um, I, I, joined, I didn't attend the convention in Guadalajara, but I did watch the, I did join the watch party. Um, one thing that stood out to me was uh, when they talked about commitment. They said that commitment isn't commitment unless you're tested. And without commitment, that there's no love. And um, I just want to, you know, just put it out there that there's always love and there's always people out there that you know, that is willing to help you, especially God, he's your number one. I was able to participate in the watch party. It was so awesome. Um, I wasn't able to be there physically at the convention, but I was still um, receiving, um, you know, worshiping God and with my, my leaders, with, um, with all my sisters and together. We just had a great time. We will also receive the word of God. And I received um, from Sister Doreen how to be committed to God, you know, and that's what I learned. I learned she opened my heart to, to see more what I have thought about, you know, and being committed and being loyal and just being faithful to God and just, you know, being committed to your ministry, being committed to church, being committed to the to the calling what God has for my life. And, and I'm grateful and I have received that power from my teacher in my life. Hi, my name is Sarah and I'm 
Good morning, church. My name is Joe, and I just came back from Women's Convention 2024, and it was such a powerful time. All the words that were spoken touched my heart in such a special way. Um, really quickly, I just want to thank my leaders for allowing me the opportunity to be in Mexico. It was such an awesome time, and even God for my salvation and bring me to the place that I am today. Um, the message that spoke to me the most was Sister Julie Bonuelo's message, and she talked about having royal DNA. And I think every speaker spoke on it, and it was so powerful because it just reminded me of the vision. And she was speaking about Second Samuel, um, Second Samuel, and how these men um, were they went through enemy lines and they brought back to their leader. And in that same way, we need to break through those enemy lines and we need to bring back to the kingdom of God. And it, again, it was just such a, such a powerful time. So I just want to thank you. Hello, my name is Yvonne, and I was just so grateful to be a part of Guadalajara Women's Convention. To see the convention center as a United We Can Covenant partner, it was amazing. And not only that, they had a, a sister that came in, ministered with worship, uh, Yvonne Munoz. I was really challenged to lead worship myself. It was just a blessing to even see new leadership rise up. The time that I was able to spend with the women of God, I truly was grateful that I didn't miss out and was able to participate and be a part of such a great ministry. And I'm so thankful. God bless you. Mr. Bree, I just want to say that convention was absolutely amazing. Until he comes, Women's Convention 2024. What a beautiful and awesome time we had in the presence of the Lord all the way in Guadalajara, Mexico where thousands of women gathered together under one rooftop to praise our king and our master. I was beyond blessed the first night Sister Julie had spoke a message in regards to multiplying ourselves, that we need to be women who know how to multiply ourselves. If this ministry is going to continue and we're gonna see souls saved and we're gonna move in this movement, we need to know how to multiply ourselves. And I was just blessed because it is just such a crazy time that we're living in now. And I know that God wants to use this today. And I don't know about you, but that did something so deep within my heart. And I am so excited to see what God's going to do in our church and within us and through us within the next few months or whatever. So I'm excited for what God has in, plan, in store and in plan for us. God bless you and see you. Praise the Lord. How many of us know we could have a good time in the Lord? Amen. And I know all the women of God had a powerful time and it was a historical moment within our ministry. But I know that there's an event coming up for the men of God. Come on, somebody. Come on, where are the men of God at? There, we're, we have a conference coming up, Mighty Men of Valor, and so you're going to be hearing videos about it. And so we want to encourage all the men of God to be a part of that as we prepare for that. Amen? 
Praise the Lord. We're going to continue on this morning with our, our service, and we're going to take this opportunity to receive our tithes, our offering, United We Can, and our building pledge. And behind me is a QR code. You're able to scan that, and you're able to give like that. Or if you give traditionally, we have an envelope there in the back of your seat. You're able to give like that as well. And um, as I begin to prepare to receive the offering this morning, and I, of course, we we are celebrating our, our Palm Sunday, and this really signifies the kingship of Jesus, amen? And when he came through Jeru Jerusalem that Sunday morning, it was there where they were laying down palm trees before him and, and they were just bowing before him because they knew that he was the king of kings and the Lord of lords, amen? And, and what they did in, in Jewish culture, what was, what was common before you entered into the presence of a king, you are, it was appropriate to bring an offering or a gift to the king. And this morning, how many of us know that it's appropriate and it's necessary to offer a gift to the king of kings and the Lord of lords? Amen. And so this morning, we want to give to God something special. We want to give to the Lord as we honor him in our tithes and our offering, as well as united we can and building pledge. But I don't want you to just give out of uh, necessity or, or an ordinary offering. But let's give as if we're giving to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I know God has been faithful in my life. Can somebody say amen? And I know God has been faithful in many of yours lives. And we want to honor the Lord this morning with all of our wealth that God has given to us. Are you ready to give here this morning? Yeah. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you, God, for always providing. And we ask, God, that you would bless these tithes and these offerings. Lord, and that you would be honored and glorified, God, with what we do have, Lord. And we ask, God, that you will bless these finances, use them for the furtherance of your gospel. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you as you give here this morning. Praise the Lord. As we pass the baskets, I have a few announcements here this morning. We want to stay connected with you, and we want to get to know you, and we want to make sure that you're growing in the things of God. So every week, every Tuesday, we have our groups. Behind me is a QR code. You're able to scan that QR code. You're able to get plugged in and be able to get connected, and there you're able to grow and mature in the things of God. And then every Sunday evening at 6.30, we have our Alvi Social, amen? And what that is, that's a, a place for students and young adults to come and hear the word of God. It's a place where you're able to find belonging. And we've been kicking off a series. Well, we've had a series entitled Not Just Luck. And so we're going to be concluding our series here this evening. So we want to invite you out. And this Wednesday, somebody say Wednesday. This Wednesday, we're not going to be here at the house of God. We're not going to be here at church. Amen. So if you come, you're going to see that the doors are going to be locked. Amen. But we're going to be meeting there at Sahara and Nallis. You can write this down. Sahara and Nallis. We're going to be meeting at the Carl's Jr. We're, we're mobilizing the entire church. But we're going to be going out and hitting the streets. Amen. We're going to be knocking on doors. We're going to be talking to people. We're going to be praying for people. We're going to be connecting and reaching our city for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. And then that following Friday. How many of us know what Friday? is it's good friday and so we have something very 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 special i know that we've been working extremely hard to have an illustrated sermon that's going to be friday we're going to be here at our church and the dress attire for that is sunday best amen if we want to come we want we want to honor the lord with the way that we look and even within our hearts but invite somebody invite somebody out invite somebody out tell them that it's going to be not just a regular service but it's going to be a power a powerful time so that's going to be friday and then that follows following Sunday morning are the men of God in the house. Men of God, we have a date there at Winchester Park at 5 a.m., amen. We're going to be meeting there with all the men of God coming together, and we're going to be having a time of prayer, devotion, coffee, and fellowship. It's something special when the men of God come together to worship the Lord, amen. 
And so it's going to be a powerful time. That's going to be Sunday morning. And then that following Sunday, or that same Sunday, we're going to be coming back for a time of celebration as we celebrate our risen Savior. Give the Lord a good praise for that. That'll be our resurrection Sunday morning celebration service. And then following that, we're going to be having baptisms and a picnic there at Winchester Park. And if you need additional information or you want to uh, get baptized, you can see Pastor Ray and he'll get you connected for that. And then... A few more announcements coming up April 19th through the 20th. We'll be having a multi-regional. We're going to be there at Victory Outreach East Las Vegas. Behind me is all the information. But you will con you, we will continue to inform you of what's going on with that. And then lastly, we have our end time rallies. Amen. And so if you're, if you're interested in that, you want to be a part of that, and you need a ride getting there, Brother Lee is actually taking sign-ups. You can see Brother Lee, and he will get you plugged in and in the van. Look to your neighbor tell him, get in the van. Amen. Go ahead and direct your attention to the screen as we have a few video announcements. You know, I won't be able to convince you, but there's someone else that is able to convince you. There's that little tugging that takes place deep inside our hearts that as you're sitting there, you begin to get nervous and something is happening inside. You don't know what it is, but something is bugging you. My friend, it's the Holy Spirit. I want you to impact this nation. Now it's time to shift gears uh, and begin to move uh, and begin to take ground and impact this city and impact this country and impact this nation. It is a God-sized task that God always gives us people, and this is an impossible task. But I declare to you that as God is accelerating his work, God is able to provide. That's what we're seeing. Powerful 7.6 magnitude earthquake. Israel has formally declared war. God will raise up leaders. God will raise up pastors. God will raise up evangelists. God will raise up missionaries. God will raise up. Big news. Bethy is now a part of Victory Outreach Bible College. Our goal is to educate, equip, and inspire a generation of visionary leaders. Students earn an associate's in biblical and theological studies and then a bachelor's in Christian ministry. At Victory Outreach Bible College, we provide pathways for all students, including the third wave generation, training men and women for effective ministry. And for those who feel God's calling to be a licensed minister, now is the time to take the next step to further your academic training and prepare for effective ministry. Enrollment is now open. Bethy is not going away. Instead, it's a fundamental part of VOBC. Our goal is to graduate the best, the brightest, the boldest, and the bravest visionary leaders who will continue the legacy of Victory Outreach International in the inner cities around the world. Start today. Visit VOBibleCollege.org. Praise the Lord. As we all stand here this morning, you know, one thing that I love about our ministry is that it gives us purpose. Amen. And uh, you've seen the, the promo now for Victory Outreach Bible College. And we're going to be actually open enrollment has already started April 15th. We're going to be teaching a class here entitled Spiritual Warfare. So if you want to be a part of that, you can see Brother Jordan or you're able to get on the web page and you're able to log in like that. And then lastly, before we get into worship, is um, the kids gang, the next gen, they're preparing an Easter egg hunt. So if you haven't yet came, if you haven't yet participated in that, I know they are accepting eggs that are already filled. And so bring them next Sunday morning, eggs that are already filled, and this is going to go for our next gen. And so we want everybody to be a part of that. And right now, just go ahead and uh, lift up your hands as we prepare our hearts for the word of God here this morning. I believe God has a word for us, but let's prepare our hearts and take a moment 
and ask God to speak to us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your Every stronghold shine through the shadows.
if you feel like shouting, you can shout. If you feel like clapping, you can clap. If you feel like dancing, you can dance. Because we've been set free. Hallelujah, Lord. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord? I want to welcome those of you here in the sanctuary and also those... Um, my other congregation, amen, that are watching online, amen. You know, one, one, one good thing about COVID, you know, the China virus, whatever, is that I learned how to preach to the camera. <laughs> you know, the only thing that I didn't like, well, I didn't like the whole thing, period, but that I didn't have an amen corner. You know, an amen corner is, uh, you know, people that can help you preach, you know. And then I, so I brought some people in, and then they weren't even participating. So I, so I fired them, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But anyway, I want to welcome you here. Uh, this, hump, this Palm Sunday, you know, uh, my name is Pastor Benny Hawkins. I'm the senior pastor here. And, uh. You know, I'm I'm glad to be here, amen. So he said, well, you're the pastor. No, no, that doesn't mean nothing, amen. I'm glad to be here in the house of the Lord, amen. Amen. I mean, we can worship all day, amen, but we're going to get into the word of God. Thank you, worship team, amen. Give the worship team a hand, amen. Praise the Lord. Are you ready? Okay, some of you are not ready yet. You're still waking up, amen. But that's all right. Uh, Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. Uh, and uh, I've entitled this message, The Name Above All Names. You know, we just sang about it, you know, and uh, I want to preach about it, amen. In Matthew chapter 21, verse 1 to 11, the word of God. And this is, a few, this, is not, this is a few days before Jesus Christ was crucified, you know, uh, not even a week, you know. Uh, but uh, so this is what's happening. It says, now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethel at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus said to disciples, saying to them, go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Zechariah prophesied this, Tell the daughters of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of the donkey also is going to be with them. It says in verse 6, So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes <clears throat> on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees, the palm trees. This is where it, it you know, was. And spread them on the road. Then the multitude who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna, which means adoration, joy, and praise, to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved 
saying, who is this? So the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Let me have every head bowed and every eye closed, please. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And now, Lord, we ask as we get into your word that your word will give reveal it to us. I pray, Lord, that you will grant us and those watching online, my God, illumination, enlightenment, revelation, understanding, and also, Lord, the power, the strength, the courage, the anointing, God, that will cause each and every one of us not to just be mere hearers of your word, but that we will become practicers and doers of your word. For we ask you this all in Jesus Christ's name. And everyone said amen and amen. You can go ahead and have your seats. I want to speak to us this Palm Sunday, which signified or commemorated what was about to happen. Reading the scripture. And did happen. As I said a few days later. Something totally different from what from what was from what was taking place that afternoon. Because really what was really happening was the stage was being set. The fulfillment of prophecy of what started when Jesus was born in a manger 33 and a half years earlier, whose cradle, talking about baby Jesus, was a trough where the animals would eat food. That was Jesus' cradle. Because there was no room anywhere for the Son of God, the Savior of the world. But 33 and a half years later, the very ones that didn't understand would find room for him on an old rugged cross on a hill called Golgotha, the place of the skull. We call it Calvary. But I want you to know here this morning, a lot of those very same people which were shouting, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Not even a week later, we're shouting, crucify him, crucify him. But what, what's heavy is they didn't know, had no idea what was happening. In other words, what was foretold. 500 years earlier, in Zechariah 9.9, I'm going to read it the way it came out, the way it comes out, the way it came out. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having, and having salvation. Lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Amen? amen. Give me an amen. amen. It was a prophecy that was being fulfilled and was fulfilled. It was now coming to pass. But they had no clue, the people there. It's just like what's happening right now. 
People can't see it. Nor can they hear the alarm. That's being sounded off 24-7. I'm reminded of this mining town. Where at night, there was a lot of noise. Horns blur, blaring. Metal against metal clanging. A lot of noise. Let me hear you say a lot of noise. But the people were accustomed to it. So much so that they would sleep through it. I, I need silence on mine. I don't know about you, amen. But I need silence on mine. In other words, when I go to sleep. But this whole town was used to the clanging and the blaring of horns. Didn't bother them. But one day, let me hear you say one day. One day. The machinery or whatever, the horns, you know, everything stopped. And there was total silence in the city, in the town. And you know what happened? Let me hear you say, what happened, Pastor Benny? The whole town woke up. The silence woke them up. Well, I'm here to tell you, to declare to you that the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is being sounded off throughout the whole world right now. And it's our responsibility to do that. But there's going to come a time where the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to stop. And you know what's going to happen with all the people? They're going to wake up. But it's going to be too late. How many know that we're in the end times? Jesus Christ is coming. My stuff is packed. I'm ready to go. But I don't want to go yet. Matthew 24. Somebody told me, you need to keep it simple, Pastor Benny. Hey, I don't know how to preach heavy. I'm a simple preacher. I don't want nobody to come out scratching their heads. What in the world did he talk about? No, I'm going to talk about Jesus, amen? I'm going to talk about the name that is above all names. And what's his name? Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. Matthew 24, verse 37 to 42. The word of God says, But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating, drinking, I could say partying, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know, just like those people that were shouting, until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Amen? Now you would think, see, because in the days of Noah, such a thing had never happened as far as building a boat in a place where there was never no water or nothing. But Noah was given instruction to build an ark. Doesn't matter if you don't understand or figure it out. That's where faith comes in. Real faith begins when all human reasoning ends. When you stop trying to figure it out, that's where faith kicks in. Now you would think, seeing all those animals, talking about Noah a little bit, and birds going into the ark, 
that would get people's attention. But it didn't. Just like right now. You know, this is one of the reasons why I believe God raised up people like us. To, I don't know how way you were, man. I know there's a lot of people that never went through the lifestyle that most of us did. But we're not the same no more. We've been cleansed. We've been washed in the blood. We have been given back our dignity. We have been set free by the power of God. We are an, an unusual sight to see. Pastor Sonny put it this way. We're unique. You know what unique means? It means different. I mean, when I used to go pick up my daughter from school, you know, you know, high school and stuff, you know, their friends would say, man, your dad looks gangster, man. And so I would have to smile with them and wave at them and stuff. <laughs> I might look like that, but I'm not that. If I'm gangster, I'm gangster for Jesus, amen? But I'm sure that there were some, talking about Noah a little bit, who probably said, man, he's really building this thing. It's ginormous. Look at it. And look at all those animals. Look at the lion behind the, the antelope. The ones they used to eat. I mean, what I'm talking about. And I'm sure there were some of them that said, you know what? Why don't we just party, but let's party right here where the gate's at. Where the door's at. Because something will jump off. I can feel it. And when we see Noah go for the, nat, the latch of the door, we'll, we'll run in. Only problem with that, Noah didn't have no business with that latch. Because the hand of God was upon that latch. The Bible says, and I'm going to I gave it to the people back there in, in, in Genesis chapter 7, verse 16. Let's see if they got it. So those that entered, male and female, all of, of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. In other words, it's the Lord that's going to shut the door and it's the Lord that's in control and once the Lord man don't have nothing to do with it. Nobody knows when it's going to come down. Only the Father. That's why you need to get your ticket. All aboard. Train's about to bust the moon. And you better get on it. Because I don't care how fast you run, you won't be over. <laughs> Amen. We can't fly, and Noah couldn't swim. But it didn't matter. Can I hear you say amen? I'm talking about the name above all name, which is, all, which is what all those people were shouting. And if some were to ask, how come you're shouting? Blessed is he who comes in the names of the Lord. Many would probably say, because everybody else is. But I'm here to tell you, that's not what God's looking for. Did you hear me? God's not looking for lip service. God's looking for life service. He's looking for a people who no matter what happens, even if it makes no sense, still they will serve, praise, and give him glory and honor. 
Like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego when they threw him in the fiery furnace. He said, we ain't bowing down to you, king. The only king that we're going to bow down is to the king of kings. Well, let's see if your king will save you from the fire. He said, well, if, the, if, 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 if my king doesn't save me, well, praise the Lord. But we ain't bowing down to, down to you, king. We're going to praise the Lord anyhow. And how many know that when they threw him in there, there was a fourth man, and his name was? So if you find yourself going through the fire, hey, there's someone right there with you, man. And his name is? Daniel, when they threw him in the lion's den, because he was praying all the time. How many know that if you don't pray, you become a prey to the enemy? And Daniel said, well, you know, and they threw him in there. And those lions were hungry. But when they threw him in there, when those lions looked at Daniel, you know what they saw? They saw like a, like a carrot or a vegetable or a tomato or a lettuce or whatever. Oh, man. I don't want that. <laughs> Daniel probably went over there to one of them, fluffed them up a little bit, and just crashed right there on it, on the lion. They were hungry because when later on, if you read the story, when they threw those other ones in there, the conspirators, I mean, they didn't even hit the ground when the lions went up and gobbled them up. How many know what I'm talking about? What about the apostle Paul and Silas? When the man from the Macedonia says, come on over here and help us. <laughs> and they went. And what happened was, you know, they were doing a work for God and they cast out a devil from some fortune teller and they got arrested, they got beaten, and they got thrown in prison. For doing a work for God, for answering the call, for answering the vision. But when they, and then they, they were put on stocks, you know what stocks are? When they put their hands right there, your head like that, and your feet like that, you can't move. But even though their hands and their feet were chained and shackled, their hearts were set free. Can I hear somebody say amen? In other words, you know, they were right there, man. They were beaten up, whatever. I said, hey, Silas, how you doing? He says, praise the Lord, Paul. He said, you know what? You know that song? You know that song. He said, why don't you belt it out? I can't sing, so you go ahead and do it. And, you know, they... In the midnight hour, they were singing a song unto the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're worshiping the name that is above all names. And because they were, an earthquake happened. I like to look at it that God was applauding them with an earthquake. And all the chains and the shackles fell off. And how many know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Amen? Amen? They weren't complaining. I mean, Silas didn't tell Paul, are you sure you saw a vision? Because look at where we're at. No. Anytime you're going to do something good for God, expect? Opposition. Expect what? Opposition. Expect opposition. They weren't offering no lip service. They were, and you ask me why, is because it was personal with them. How many of you know we serve a personal God? It was life service. They were offering sacrifices of praise to the King of Kings and the Lords of Lords. And I'm sure there was those they were worshiping the, the name that is above all names. You know what the name was? What was the name? Jesus. 
What was the name? Jesus. Philippians 2, verse 5 to 11 says, Let this mind or this attitude be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation as Jesus, taking the form of a bondservant, he came to, to serve, not to be served. And coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of, the de- point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. How many, how many understand that you don't want to bow down right now? You're going to bow down later. It's better that you bow down right now. Amen. The first thing that I want to give you, give you three things real quick, is that you need to know that you have access to his name. But at the same time, your motives plays a role. Amen? Take, for instance, you know, well, I'm going to give it to you, amen. Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. See, not everybody has access to the name of Jesus. I mean, the only access that you have to the name of Jesus when you weren't, when you weren't saved as... Uh, which is, but, but as many as call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. That's the only. Uh, opportunity that you get. As many as call upon the name of the Lord. That, 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 that's the way I got saved. When I got shot and I hit the floor. And I said, Lord, save me. And right there, the Lord, you know, I didn't realize that, but that's what happened because things started changing. Amen? But then those that don't know the Lord, they don't have access to the Lord. Like these people that I want to talk to you a little bit about. The Bible says in Acts chapter 19, verse 13, these were hirelings. It says... Then some of the internet Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exorcise you by the, by, by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. They're trying to piggyback on Paul's anointing. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish sheep priest who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. This became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear came up. On them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. In other words, they got right. Also, many of those who had practiced magic through their books to get, uh, uh, brought their books and burned them in the sight of all, and they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. I don't know how much that is, but I think it's a whole lot of money. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. Amen? But they didn't have access to the name that we have access to. 
Amen? I want you to know that that name transforms lives. It heals. It delivers. It sets the captive free of depression, anxiety, fear, suicide tendencies. They need to go. Can I hear somebody say amen? Amen. Are you still with me? I won't testify. I remember when I was coming up in the Lord and the things of God. When I got out of prison. And my family found out that I was a Christian. They began to diss me. They didn't like that at all. Because I became a Christian. But let me say this. I went in prison. Lost. But I came out found. I went in blind. But I came out seen. And it's been 40 years that I've been serving the Lord. And the rest is his story of what he can do in a person's life. That's what happens when you allow the name that is above all names to reign supreme in one's life. Amen. You can't give the Lord just part of your heart. You need to give it all up. And know that he's able to turn things around. Just like that. Just like how? Just like how? Just like that. Well, that just like that day came. And remember, my my family didn't like me. They disapprove of what I became. But the Lord told me, don't don't preach to them. Just let your light shine. Let your actions speak louder than your words. Because born again is not having to say you're born again, but it's having your actions speak for you. How many know that action sometimes speaks louder than? Listen to what happened. And I'm not a lead. You know, I'm just coming up in the things of God, man. I love Jesus. And my oldest sister was in the hospital. And they, the doctors, didn't know really what was wrong with with her. And she was going to get operated on in the morning. She was already prepped to get operated on. We're just waiting for the next day. And as I was going home from the church, I was passing by the hospital and the Lord said, go and pray for her. I mean, the Lord speaks to me sometimes, you know. Maybe not as much as he does to some of you, but to to me sometimes he speaks, you know. And so I made a U-turn and I went back. The whole familia was there. And they saw me, you know. And, you know, they said, oh, my God, what does he want? And I said to my sister, I said, I come to you as your brother. But more than that, I come to you in the name of the Lord. In the what? In the name of the Lord, the name that is above every name. Listen to me. I led her to the Lord. I mean, that's the greatest miracle that you can give to anybody. And then I took my little bottle of oil out and I, I prayed for her. And then I told her this. And you're not going to get operated on in the morning. 
And as I, when I went home, when I was going home in my car, I was playing out the whole thing. And then I came to that place where I said what I said about her not getting operated on in the morning. I said, why did I have to say that for? <laughs> She's already prepped. But it was out of my hands. It was a word of knowledge that I was giving her. See, because if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, all the gifts are God, has, the Holy Ghost have access to. As I was putting this message together, I called my, my, my sister. Because I want, it's been a long time, man. I've been saved for 40 years. You know? That must have been maybe 35 years or more. I don't know. And I said, I said, sister, I said, remember? She said, yeah, I sure do. I said, can you tell me what really happened? And she began to tell me. And she says, you told me I wasn't going to get operated on, and I didn't get operated on. And I said, well, what happened? He said, well, I was sleeping. He says, it must have been you, she said. No, it wasn't me, I told her, you know. I says, someone came and pulled my feet, pulled them. And when they pulled them, I heard them, or whoever, say, you're healed. And that thing that was happening to her disappeared. And she came the next day to church. And I saw her. I said, hey, you're supposed to be in the hospital. Oh, brother. Let me tell you what happened. And she told me. But my point is this. I told her, I come to you as your brother. But more than that, I come to you in the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen? Listen, church. It's time we start using the weaponry the Lord has given us access to. The second thing that I want to give us is we've been given authority. Authority to use his name. I want you to know that it's the only name that both the devil and all his demonic spirits are going to recognize and obey. Let me give you an example. If it's raining really hard and the, and the lights there on the corner on Mojave and Desert Inn break and somebody goes and cut offs or whatever in a slingshot and tries to direct traffic, I obey him. He said, get that crazy guy, man. But if you get that same crazy guy and put a, a uniform on him and put him there, the same person, the cars, the people are going to stop. Not because of the person, but because of the authority that that person represents. And how many know that we are clothed with the whole armor of God? When that lying devil sees you, he, he, he shouldn't see you. He just sees somebody else there. And what's his name? Jesus. He says, stop! In the name of the Lord. That sounds like a, like a screech. I practice that all morning, amen. <laughs> but the people said, who is this? That's what the people said. Who is this? He said, well, he is, he's a prophet from Nazareth that came out of Galilee. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus was more than a prophet. 
Jesus was, is, and will ever be the I am that I am. He is whatever you want him to be. He could be your healer. He could be your deliverer. He could be your comforter. He could be your peace. He could be your joy. He could be your... Amen? I mean, there was a time when Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And somebody said, well, some say you're Jeremiah, some say you're this one, some say you, but who do you say that I am? And let me tell you something, not only those of you that are here, but those watching online, you're going to have to answer that question. Who is Jesus to you? Who do you think Jesus is? Either he is or he's not. What the Bible says. Well, I choose to believe every word that the word of God says he is. And I want you to know something else. That name that is above all names. It's, it's awesome and some. It was that name that came into your life a long time ago. Remember? And the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit came upon that name. And what happened to you was you, you who was dead, you resurrected, you came alive. You're not dead no more in your trespasses and sins. You've been raised up and now you're clothed in the righteousness of Jesus. Can I hear somebody say amen? Amen. Let me close. Still with me? <laughs> Luke chapter. I'm talking about the authority of God. It says in Luke chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself were about to go. Verse 2, then he said to them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Amen? Verse 17. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, talking about the demonic forces. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Verse 20. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you. But rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. Amen? My name is written in heaven. Highlighted by the blood of Jesus. I don't know about you. But my name. At one time. Was full of shame. But because. It had an encounter. Supernatural encounter. With the name, which is above every name, I can honestly say it has never been the same. Not only that, but he destroyed all that condemnation, guilt, and shame. But he didn't stop there. But went on. And my third point is action and apply.
action and apply. Jesus will say now, put action to it an application. Matthew 28, 18. To 20 says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And he delegated it to you. And he said, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, all people, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things. How many things? That I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Can I hear somebody say amen? Amen. And the last scripture that I'm going to give you. You can come up to the piano, son, wherever you're at. Hallelujah, Jesus. Talking about the name that is above every name. John chapter 14, verses 12 to 14 says, This is Jesus speaking. He says, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, or she will do also. And greater works than this they will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen? Listen. You have access to the name. God has given you authority. And now you got to put action and application to it. Because God wants to show you. I wasn't going to share this, and I asked the Lord, but... If you want me to share it, Lord, just re- let me know. I got three minutes still, amen. Not that I go by the clock, amen. But there was a time where God was taking me to a whole nother level. He, I was going into full-time ministry and becoming a home director, a men's home director. <clears throat> and I was going to go to the ranch to go see how it's run so I can get an idea how the home is run. And the night before I left, I was visited. What do you mean visited, Pastor Benny? Well, it was about 1 o'clock in the nighttime, and I felt someone in my room. And there was light from the street so I could see a little bit <clears throat> and I, when I woke up opened up my eyes I saw this face suspended in the air but this far that looked like a lizard but it looked like a person at the same time and it was staring at me And I looked at it, and then I said, man, I'm seeing things, you know. So I kind of wiped my eyes a little bit, and I zeroed in on it. And it was still looking at me. And, man, I got scared. I mean, you talk about shields and whatever. I mean, I got scared, man. I mean, this thing was right there. And I want to rebuke it. I want to take authority over it. Only thing with that, I was petrified. What does that mean, Pastor Benny? It means you want to say something, but you can't say it. 
because of your emotion is kind of like paralyzed. And I know what I want to say. And it's like looking at me, staring at me. And I want to say something. I want to say just one word. And finally, everybody say finally. I said the word. I said like this. Jesus. And when I said, just pretty like that, Jesus. <laughs> it took off. And I says, whoa, that's heavy. And then my bed started shaking. I said, oh, how weird, an earthquake. I look in the next day, it wasn't an earthquake. It was the powers of the enemy. But listen to me. The Lord was using that to get me to where I needed to go. All of a sudden, I, I started getting my, myself together. I says, ain't nothing going to happen to me. So I'm just beginning to start my journey. I'm going tomorrow to go be trained. I'm going into full-time ministry. And besides that, there is no weapon that is formed against me that's going to prosper. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am more than a conqueror. I am an overcomer. I am clothed by the armor of God. And I started speaking in tongues and I went to sleep. And the next day as I'm going up the home pass, my car that I just put a rebuild engine in it blew up. But by this time, I knew the battle was on. I knew that the battle was on. Giga, bring it on, devil. Is that all you got? You know what I did? I parked the thing. I went to a gas station. Can I park this thing here for a month? He said, sure you can. Call the, call the ranch. Come and get me. I don't care about the car. As long as this car don't break down. Amen? This car he got some warranty, beloved, that's out of this world. It's out of this world. Because it's been signed by the name that is above all names. The name of. The name of. The name of. Stand with me, please. And that's my Palm Sunday message, amen? <laughs> Talking about the name. See, we're going to worship the name. We're going to worship the name. We're gonna know, we know whose name it is. I'm going to make an altar call. If you're here, you're not saved, you're not born again, or you're firing away from the Lord, you want to come back to God, you want to get it right. I want you to step out of your seat and I want you to come to the front because I want to say a special prayer for you. Come on. Come on. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Come on. You're not coming to Pastor Benny. You're not even coming to Victory Outreach. You're coming to the one that died for you. The one that was beaten beyond recognition. Come on. Bring it. I'm not talking about religion. That's what my whole family was caught up in, religion. I thank God for the Catholic Church. They told me about God, but then they, tell me, they never told me how to get to God. Anybody else? Come on. Bring it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Talk about relationship. Amen? I'm going to wait one minute. One minute. Those of you that are watching online, if you're sitting down, stand up. If you're laying down and you can, get up. Says, why are you asking that, Pastor Benny? Because it's a knack of faith. Faith without works is dead. <laughs> Amen? Are you tired of living the life that you're living, that you've been living? Listen, God will change your whole life, man. 
not make, it won't make you some person that the enemy is telling you that you're going to be. The enemy don't even know. And you're going to become a, a Jesus freak. Well, I'd rather be a Jesus freak than a devil freak. Amen. Praise the Lord. Those of you that are here in the front, I want you to repeat after me. Those of you that are watching online, and if you're sitting down, if you're standing up and you want to repeat this prayer, God is not limited. He'll touch you right there where you're at. You just got to mean it. I want you to say, Heavenly Father, forgive me for my sins. They're my sins, Lord. I've committed them. Right now, I invite Jesus Christ into my heart, into my life, to be my Savior, to be my Lord, to be my everything. Jesus, come on in. Take complete control of my life from this day forward. And help me, Jesus, to serve you for the rest of my life. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you right now, Lord. I pray that you lift up the guilt, lift up the condemnation, Father God. Yes, Father God. I pray for those that are watching online, God. I pray, God, right now that you lift up the shameless, Lord God. Yes, Father, the fears, my God, the anxieties, the worries, God. And replace it, God, with your love, your joy, and your peace. For I pray this in the name of the Prince of Peace. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand. Okay, I'm going to make another altar call. And this altar call, I don't know how this message spoke to you. But maybe you haven't really activated the access that you have and the authority that the Lord has given you, the privilege of and that is the name that is above all names. But you say, Pastor Benny, from this day forward, actually, I'm going to come on Wednesday. And I'm going to get busy for the Lord. But right now, I want his anointing. If that's you, I want you to step out of your seat and I want you to come to the front. Because I want to say a special prayer for you. I want a special anointing, Lord. Come on, come on, bring, come on, bring it, bring it. I'm going to pray for a fresh anointing upon your life. I already see the work happening. But I want to go to a whole nother level. Amen? Amen. I want to go to a whole nother level. And somebody says, different levels, different devils. But that's all right. The name stays the same. Jesus. Amen? I'm excited, man, about what God's going to do. I am so excited, man. I'm going to see my grandchildren on fire for God. And I'm going to see some of you Come on, bring in. Take a step of faith and come to the altar because at the, it is at the altar where God is going to alter your life. Get closer. Get closer. You know, I mean, if you're given an opportunity to go to a concert and they tell you, what do you want? Do you want front row seats or do you want to live in the, over there in the back? Hey, you want front row seats. Well, God has given you front row seats right now. Amen. Listen, what the enemy meant for evil, God's going to turn it around for good. Just like what he did with my family. Just like that. Amen? All that hurt, it's going to be gone. Say, so how do you know, Pastor Benny? I don't know, but God knows. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. I want you to repeat after me, okay? I'm going to include myself in this prayer. Because I haven't arrived. i got a long ways to go still. 
I want you to say, Heavenly Father, forgive me, Lord. Let your blood cleanse me from the crown of my head to the tips of my fingers to the bottoms of my feet. And Lord, I'm sorry for taking your name for granted. But from this day forward, I'm moving aside and I'm giving full access of my heart, my mind, my entire being to the name that is above every name. So Lord, have your way. Let your anointing, Lord, come upon me, bestowing upon me a fresh fire for not only you, but for the lost, that I may never forget where I came from and where I'm going. For one day, I'm going to be with you, Lord, in heaven. But until then, I'm going to go for it, Lord. I'm going to go for it, Lord. I'm going to go for it, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, right there where you are. Just lift up your hands. Jesus, you believe.
lifted in this place the Bible says that as we draw near to God that God will draw near to us and as we praise and we worship the Lord I want you to know something strongholds and generational curses are being broken over your family's lives listen your praise and your worship it's breaking generational curses come on do you believe that do you believe that there's something taking place that's not just present or just not just now but it's generational i feel the lord telling me that it's generational it's generational there's generational curses that are being broken and it's going to be through your praise and through your worship so we're going to sing this song just one more time but i want you to lift up your hands and i want you to lift up the name of jesus Generational curses, generational curses broken.
There may be somebody here this morning that you have opened yourself up to witchcraft. There might be somebody that has, maybe you've went to a fortune teller or you've engaged in sorcery. And I believe the Lord wants to break that off of you, wants to deliver you from that. If that's you, I want you just to raise your hand. Name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you because we know that there's freedom in your name and we dispel God that spirit God of witchcraft Lord and we curse it and we bind it in the mighty name of Jesus and we know God that there's no name God that is greater than your name your name God is above all names Lord and we thank you for the healing that's in the room if you need a healing lift up your hands father in the name of Jesus Lord we see the hands going up Lord you are the great physician you're a great physician, Lord, and you've done it and you've done it again. And so right now we speak, God, healing into the atmosphere. We speak healing in the room, Lord. We command hepatitis to be broken. We command COVID to be broken. We command cancer to be broken in the name of Jesus. You may need a hip replacement right now in the name of Jesus. We ask that you will pop that hip right back into place. We pray, God, for knees, Lord. We pray, God, for backs, Lord. We pray, God, even for sleep paralysis. Maybe there's somebody here this morning. You say, you know what? I haven't been able to sleep. I've been battling. I've been battling. But I can't get, get, get good rest. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we command it to be broken, Lord. We take authority, God. You've given us authority, Lord, to trample on, God, the scorpions and snakes, God, in the spirit of divination, God, the spirit of sorcery, Lord. We bind it, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God. And we speak freedom, Lord. We speak freedom, God, here in this house. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We speak against the spirit of poverty. In the name of Jesus. You've called us, God, to live a life of abundance. We ask, God, that you will help us to be disciplined, Lord. Teach us to be disciplined. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There's freedom. Lift up your hands. Oh, Jesus. We just bow before you, Lord. God, we honor you as king. We honor you as Lord. You're the commander of heaven's army, God. And there's nobody, God, that is greater than you. Lord, we lay, God, our lives down before you just the way that you did, God, as you came, God. Lord, on Palm Sunday, you laid your life down, Lord. God, as we get ready for Good Friday, God, help us, God, to remember, Lord, what you have done for us, God. But let us not just keep it to ourselves. 
but Lord, let us spread the good news, Lord. Let us spread, God, the gospel. Lord, I pray, God, right now that you will baptize us, God, in power. Baptize us with your fire of your Holy Spirit. That when we leave these doors, God, that we would feel, God, an urgency. We would feel a fire like Jeremiah, God. Lord, as he preached, God, oh, Lord, that there was a fire that was shut up in his bones, Lord. So give us a fire this morning. God, to spread, God, your gospel, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for this special moment, God, here this morning in your presence. We love you, God, and we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout glory. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Did God do something in your life this morning? Praise the Lord. Well, we see a lot of first time guests here with us this morning. Please don't leave in a hurry. We have some gift bags there in the back for you and we wanna get connected with you. We wanna get all your information, amen. Get you plugged into one of our groups, amen. And don't forget we have a cafe there in the back. We have Pasole to this afternoon, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you. Consider yourself dismissed. And we look forward to staying connected with you.